Okay, so IELTS candidates are often nervous when they are face to face with the examiner on test day. But don't worry, because in this video, we will look at the 10 best tips that have been given to us by IELTS experts. And by following these tips and practicing, you will be on your way to get your desired score in IELTS speaking. So let's begin. So the first thing that we need to know is how the IELTS speaking exam actually works. Once we know this, only then we can look at every tip. So whether you are taking the computer-based exam or the paper-based exam, both exams consist of you coming face to face with the IELTS examiner for the IELTS speaking exam. And the IELTS speaking exam is made up of three parts. Now, part one will last anywhere between four to five minutes. And here you will have a conversation with the IELTS examiner and the conversation will be about yourself. So you may be asked questions about your family, your work, your home life, and your personal interests. Now, for part two of the IELTS speaking exam, you will be given a card with a topic, and then you will be given one minute to make notes on the topic and to prepare to speak. Now, once this minute is over, you will then be asked to speak for two minutes. Once this two minutes is over, you will then move on to part three of the speaking test, and this is the final part, and in this part, you will have a conversation with the IELTS examiner about the topic you just discussed in part two. Now, just like part one of the test, part three should take around four to five minutes. Okay, so now that we know how the speaking exam is structured, let's go straight to the first tip, which is given to us by IELTS experts, and that is don't memorize answers. So according to the official IDP website, this is what they say about memorizing answers. Don't memorize answers, especially in part one. Memorized language doesn't give the examiner an accurate measure of your English language skills. The examiner will be able to tell if you have memorized your answers and this may influence your final band score. So that basically means that if the examiner can tell that you have memorized your answers, you will not be able to get a high score. Okay, so according to the official IDP website, our second tip given to us by IELTS examiners is don't use big and unfamiliar words. Now, I understand that in the IELTS exam, you might want to impress the examiner by using big and fancy words that you have just learnt. However, a big part of the speaking exam is to use conversational language and use words that are natural. So you don't want to use words that are too unique or words that we rarely ever use in English. Also, remember, it is better to be safe than sorry. So try not to use words that are a bit too difficult or a bit uncomfortable. And that means that you should definitely stay away from words that you yourself are unfamiliar with. And another point is that there is a higher chance of you mispronouncing a word if you are not familiar with it. But if you do want to know how you can impress the examiner, we will look at this later on in the video. Okay, so the next tip given to us by our IELTS experts is to use a range of grammatical structures. So, what does that mean? When the IELTS examiner assess your speaking, they look at four different sections. Now, luckily, we can view those sections online and you can see the screenshots on your screen now. And this is exactly what the IELTS examiner will use. If they don't use this, it will be something similar. So let's break this down. The four assessments that you will be tested against are fluency and coherence, lexical resource, grammatical range and accuracy, and finally, pronunciation. So as you can see, the third thing that you will be assessed against is grammatical range and accuracy. So grammatical structures just basically means have you used simple sentences? Have you used complex sentences? Can you talk about the past successfully, the present, 
the future, all using the correct tenses. Now, I don't just want to give you that tip alone. I want to explain to you how you can actually make sure you are using a variety of grammatical structures. Now, one thing that we can do to improve in this area is to identify our own mistakes. And that's because once we know what our mistakes are, only then we can fix them. So finding out what your mistakes are is like 50% of the battle already won. So how do you actually identify your own mistakes? Well, there's a few ways we can do this. The first one is that you can practice speaking with an IELTS coach or an English teacher. Another thing that you can do is record yourself speaking. And then once you have recorded yourself, you can go back and watch the video and see how you actually sound like when you are speaking. It will be a lot easier to identify mistakes once you are looking at a recording. Now, there are other things that you can do to improve in this area, but in my experience, these two are the best options, especially the first option where you would speak to an English teacher or an IELTS coach or anyone who is experienced in the English language. Okay, now the fourth tip that experts talk about, and this might surprise you, and that is to not worry about your accent. And this is something I strongly agree with. Do not worry about your accent. There is no right or wrong accent. In fact, if you think you speak in a strong accent, that's very different to a native English speaker, you should be proud of yourself. That shows you that you can already speak one language and you are trying to learn another language, which many people around the world cannot do. So don't worry about speaking in an accent, okay? And the second thing is that you will not be marked down or marked up for speaking in a specific accent. So you don't need to try to worry about imitating how a British person talks or trying to copy an American accent or an Australian accent. The only thing that you should be focusing on is learning how to communicate well. And that can be improved by just practicing speaking English as much as possible and with as many people as possible. So once you're out in the market, try to speak English. If you are on the bus, try to speak English. In a shop, speak English. Take advantage of your opportunity when you are outside and this will help you communicate well. Now, if you are still a bit shy or insecure about your accent, again, there's, you don't need to be, but just say you are, one thing that you can do is watch TV shows where people speak naturally. So a good show that I often recommend on this channel is Watching Friends. And that's because it's a very conversational TV show. People in this show speak very naturally. So if you watch shows like Friends, naturally you might pick up words and they will become a part of your vocabulary. Now, another thing that you can do is if you go on YouTube and you just search for IELTS speaking exams, you can look at how other people, just like yourself, IELTS candidates, you can see how they scored in the IELTS speaking exam. And you will see straight away that it does not matter what accent you speak in. The examiner only tests you against the four sections that we spoke about before. Okay, so the fifth tip given to us by our IELTS experts is pause to think. There is no harm in taking a short break to think about the answer that you will give, especially in part three of the IELTS speaking exam. And that's because in part three, you will be asked questions that actually require you to think. So it's completely fine if you just take a moment like this and just think about what you will say. Now here are some phrases that you can use which will give you some time to think of what to say next. If the IELTS examiner asks you a question, you can say, well, that's an interesting question, or I have never thought about that, but, hmm, let me see. That's a good point. That's a difficult question, but I'll try and answer it. However, well, some people say that in this case, or in the case, however, I think, and the final one, this one's the simplest one to use. Let me think about that for a minute. Now, by using words like this, or just taking your time to give an answer, you will not lose marks. But don't get this confused with speaking fluently. Tip number six is avoid using fillers. 
So what is a filler? Well, a filler is a word that we might use when we don't know what to say or how to respond. So here are some examples of fillers. Um, uh, um, you know, like, uh, so these are just some examples of fillers. And the reason why you want to avoid using fillers is because it shows the examiner that you do not have a big enough vocabulary. Because if you did, then you would use different words rather than using words just to fill up a gap. Now, the problem with fillers is that everyone uses them at some point and you might not even realize that you are using them or you might not even realize how often you use them. So just like we mentioned previously, a good way to check if we are using this is to record ourselves and just go back and view the recording. Now, obviously, if you are using fillers, then the next time you practice speaking English, just try to cut out fillers and be a bit more cautious of them, be a bit more aware. Another thing you can do to avoid using fillers is just practice answering IELTS speaking questions. So what you can do is if you use this website on your screen, there are other websites, but this is a good one. If you just go through all the questions and just highlight all the questions that you like or that you find easy to answer, make a note of them and practice answering those questions. Now, again, you want to practice questions that are easy for you because you will give a more natural and fluent answer and therefore you are less likely to use fillers. So once we get into the habit of answering these questions, then when we answer more difficult questions, hopefully our habit of not using fillers will carry on over. And when we are practicing, we need to repeat this process over and over and over again. Remember, practice makes improvement. Now, another thing that you can do to help you achieve your desired score is extend your answers. And this basically just means adding more information to your answers. And when we extend our answers, we are not doing this just to give very, very long answers. In fact, that's not what we are aiming for. The reason why we want to extend our answers is because naturally, some questions that the IELTS examiner will ask, they just require a short answer. But by giving a short answer, you are not giving yourself the chance to speak and show off your English. So for example, if the examiner asks you, do you like water? I mean, they probably won't ask you that question, but I'm just using this question as an example. You can answer this question with one word. Yes. Do you like water? Yes. No. And that's it. You would have answered the question, but you're not giving yourself the chance to speak. So what I would say is something like this. Yes, I love drinking water. However, I don't like drinking it all the time. So what I did there was I gave a benefit of water and then I gave the opposite. So I gave a reason why I might not like it. And you can do this with a lot of questions. So um, do you think students should use technology? Again, I can just say yes. But what I might say is, yes, I think students should use technology, but not all the time. Now, a, a final example is in part one, where the examiner might ask you um, questions such as, how many siblings do you have? And here you will just say, if you have three siblings, then you will say three. Or you might say, I have three siblings. And again, those answers are fine, but you want to extend your answers. So give a little bit more description. For example, how many siblings do you have? Well, I have two older brothers and one younger sister. Can you see how I just added extra information? I added that my brothers were older and I added that my sister is younger. And I spoke about them separately. I didn't just say I, I have three siblings and grouped them all together. I talked about my brothers, talked about my sister, and I gave an okay answer. It wasn't too detailed. It was just a decent answer. And that's what we are aiming for. So extend your answers. Now, I'm gonna give a very long detailed answer and I want you to compare the difference.
because I don't want you to make this mistake which I'm about to make now. So how many brothers and sisters do you have? Well, I have two older brothers and one younger sister. My eldest brother, he's seven years older than me. And my other brother, he is five years older than me. And my sister, she is seven years younger than me. And at the moment, she is studying in college. Can you see that? It, it was too much information. The English might have been fine. The words might have been okay. I may have spoken fluently, but it was just too much. So we would just want to not give long answers, but just the answer that you give, just extend them by a sentence or two, especially when the answer might be short anyway. Okay, now before we get on to the next tip, if you are benefiting from this video, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I've got lots of IELTS videos that will definitely help you. Now the eighth tip is smiling because this helps with pronunciation. Now, often when I've seen uh, IELTS speaking exams on YouTube, the candidates often look serious. And I understand why somebody might look serious. First of all, you're on a one-to-one -one setting. It's an interview, it's an exam. So you might think that we have to be serious, but remember, it's a speaking conversation. Now, although smiling won't actually give you extra marks, it can help you feel a lot more relaxed and that's what we should be aiming to do in our speaking exam. Now, according to the IDP website, if you go on their website, they say that smiling helps us calm our nerves, which in turn helps with our pronunciation. Tip number nine is don't speak in a monotone voice. So monotone basically just means speaking in a flat pitch like this, like a robot. So listen to this sentence. I love sports, especially football. If you listen to that sentence, it doesn't actually sound like I love football. Or listen to this, I hate basketball with a passion. It's just very robotic. The pitch is flat and this is what we mean by monotone and we should stay away from speaking in a monotone voice. So what can we do instead? Well, in the English language, there is something called intonation. Intonation is where we add stress or emphasis on certain words. So I want you to listen to this sentence. Same sentence, but with intonation. I love sports, especially football. Oh, I hate basketball. Can you see the difference? I love playing football. I love playing football. There is a big difference. One sounds very boring and robotic, the other one sounds like I actually love football. So stay away from speaking in a monotone voice and use intonation. A good way to practice your intonation is to talk about things that you are passionate about or things that you hate. For example, oh, I can't stand eating this type of food, whatever type of food it is. Or I love Pakistani curries. You get the idea. Okay, so according to the IELTS experts and the official IDP website, another thing we can do to help us get a high score is practice common IELTS topics. This is probably the most important tip. And if you are going to just pick one tip to practice, this should be it. And that's because it will probably make the biggest difference. So in part two of the IELTS speaking exam, the examiner will give you a specific topic to talk about and you will have to talk about that topic for two minutes. So if you don't know anything about that topic or if you do not know any vocabulary related to that topic, you will struggle. So what you can do to help yourself best prepare for that situation is look at this website on your screen. I will leave the link for this website in the description below. Again, there are other websites that you can use but this is the one I would recommend. Go through the different topics on this website. A lot of them are very common and very popular. So if you can get used to these topics and get used to speaking about them, you will improve your chances of performing well in the IELTS speaking exam. Okay, now that brings us to the end of this video. If you're still watching till this point, thank you very much. If you have any questions, Put them in the comment section below and I will reply to you and make sure you watch this video over here which will also help with your speaking exam. Bye bye.